Hey everyone, welcome back to, uh, this is actually technically a new campaign. I attempted to do day two of my Liberation Sinai campaign, but came across a, a slight issue. Went up with a uh, cast loadout, so basically wanted to go up with some Mavericks and was able to get up, get them bore sighted. But upon getting them to the AO, the HUD indicated that the Seeker head was looking where it should have been, which is where the targeting pod was. Bore sighted was perfect, but looking at the weapons page on the MFD screen, there was, it was off. It was pointing in its own direction. Uh, uh, not sure what the case was. This was Sunday night and this early Monday morning. I uh, decided to call it quits at 2 a.m. Uh, Monday morning. Got up several hours later, had like an hour to kill before going into work, and thought I'd give it another shot. This time, instead of using Mavericks, I figured I'll just go up with some GBUs and, you know, lays these bombs down onto the target and we would be good to go. Turns out that the, so the laser code and the bomb code were correct. Dropped the bomb, had a good lays. Bomb fell a couple hundred yards short of the target. Thought it was weird. Looped around, did a 180, came back in, and dropped another one. Same thing. So, I'm not sure if it was a liberation issue. I don't necessarily want to blame it on that program, but there was obviously some something had gone wrong because I had hopped in single player, used Mavericks, used laser guided bombs, had no issues. So, to kind of eliminate that type of issue, I've decided to try the basically the same campaign, but in Retribution instead of Liberation. Supposedly, well, Retribution is based off of Liberation, kind of the same same concept. Somehow they were able to rework the AI and get the AI to perform better, such as seed escorts and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So this is technically day one of my Sinai Liberation campaign. We are fast once I get clearance to start up here. But as you can see, we are kind of tasked with a mix loadout. We've got two harms and two CV-105s. We are gonna attempt a pop-up attack on a SA-10 site. So that's today's, uh, today's sortie. Uh, we're gonna use our harms when we get close to the target uh, and attempt to distract the SA-10 site so that we can pop up and get hopefully these uh, CBUs off on target. Uh, we'll see how that goes though. Skarn here, and I would like your opinion on something. I would like to know which style videos you like. Do you like the less edited version of these fights, including the long, boring parts of the fight? Or would you prefer one that is a little more edited with less fluff the video, i.e. a shorter video? Let me hear your thoughts down in the comments section. Yeah, okay, we're doing a full mill takeoff because the only external fuel tanks I have is an underbelly. Too bad. Got a lot of wind pushing from left to right. Gotta keep my left uh, break breakdown. We're rotating. We're up. Gears up. And we're just gonna fly straight into uh, straight in. We're not gonna follow our. Air flight path at all. Hopefully there aren't too many uh, enemy fighters up right now. We've got our friendly bar cap that's up. CBU 105 set up, 150 feet spacing, uh, 1500 feet burst altitude. That way the little bomblets don't drift off too far. Uh, we're gonna get set up with our arms as well and we're gonna probably touch those off uh, before we get on, set it up on the weapons page. I think we're gonna do pre-briefed. 
I can't speak. All right, Patriot sights awake. Hopefully, hopefully the seed flight's able to get their body tons off. But sadly, I don't have much faith in in the AI to perform their tasks. Patriot site's clearly locking up the JF-17. I don't think it's fired yet, though. But I'm given getting a heavy ton for the Patriot site. JS-17 is turning off without firing. Go figure. Seventeen is down low. He's probably defending. Man, if only you had some anti-radiation missiles, you could do something about. As soon as we start to get into the threat rings here, we'll we'll be dropping down low level and beginning our run. There's our SD or um, S300 site, SA10. That is a very lethal uh, surface to air system. JS-17's turning back in. Maybe he'll actually engage? I sure hope. There's an Patriot locking us up again. not locking us up, we're just getting the uh, returns from them. I just want to see that LD-10 get launched. Fingers crossed. Yeah, there, it just launched. He's got more than enough time to fire off that to fire off that LD10. He's super close. I don't know why he's not doing shit about it. Alright, we'll get our lights off. 
Jupiter Master Armand. Actually, I think because there's an SA8 site as well. But I think I might do pre-briefed fire on an SA8. Looks like the harm code is 117. So let's do weapons page. Oh, I don't know. want to launch on the SA-8 site though. I might just leave that one. off in front of us that can kind of shield us from the SA-10 site, give us a little bit of cover. But then as we pop up, we've got that, we've got that SA-8 that's right there. SA-8, SA-3. SA3 123 110 Maybe I will try 123 I think I'll fire on the SA SA-3 because that thing at close range is pretty lethal. Incredibly fast missile. Looks like our external fuel tank is getting low too, so we'll get that prep to get dropped. Like the jettison. 7,200 pounds, so we'll go ahead and dump that. Get our weapons page up again for the SA-3. And I think we'll quickly switch back over to the S-300 site, but honestly there is a possibility that both of these harms are going to get shot down anyways. So it's mostly just a distraction. That JF-17 is able to get their harms off. Oh, there it goes! Yes, that's a good sign. That makes me really happy. It seems like the AI work and retribution compared to uh, uh, liberation is a little bit better. And that harm goes off makes me extremely happy. He fired off two of them as well. I am happy to see that. Look at that. Oh, unfortunately, it looks like it hit the, uh, the launcher instead of the uh, track radar, which was right behind the launcher. And it looks like we're about 27 miles from steer point 10. 26 miles now. 
I think once we're down to like 12 miles or so, I'll fire off these arms and then quickly switch over to Right OSB 6. Right OSB 6. Yeah, voice attacks not working, it's acting up on me right now. So ten sites sees me. Alright, we're seventeen miles. There's one Magnum SA three, Magnum SA eight or SA ten. Then we're switching to our laser guided bomb. Gonna get draft set up. We're also gonna push full mill. These are harms up there, they're gonna start coming down. We are gonna start pulling up here shortly. We're gonna maintain low altitude as S300 is launching on the uh, harms. Alright, we're gonna hit the burners here. And then I think we're gonna aim for these mountains here on the right once we pop up. Alright, there's our queue. Alright, bombs are off. Should chat up and clear. Alright, we're good. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Alright, I think we're gonna game for the other side of the mountains here. And then I think we'll pop up in a second to see if our if our weapons hit anything. Which I don't see anything on the RWR, at least as far as the SA-10 goes. Uh, we might have... I see an SA-3 waking up. Nope, there's the SA-10. SA-10 is still active. I believe in one of the recent updates, uh, a couple months back, they increased the... Increase the size of the bomb as far as it goes on radars. And I think at least an SA 15 is able to lock on the bombs now, too, and be shot down. So that may be maybe what's going on here. So if that's the case, I don't know. I don't really know what we're going to do about that. I guess I can see if I can't spend, afford to lose a couple of aircrafts and we're gonna pop up here real quick. I just need to be able to see the site here. Oh, it looks like we got some hits. We got some smoke, that's a good sign. I just don't think any of the uh, track raiders. All right, that's cool. Hell yeah. 
I was not expecting that, actually. So let me go ahead and get back into air to air mode here. So we're climbing, and there's nothing on RWR. There's no SA-10 site, so I think that was... I think we were successful. I think that was a really good run, exactly what we needed to. So now that'll open up... Um, that'll open up the front lines a little bit more, so I think... Uh, I think technically our day two will be able to focus on a little bit more cast flights. Uh, granted, as you can see over here, we've still got quite a bit of uh, radar guided triple A's. I think that's an SA-8 site, or that might be more triple A. And then as you see, we've got radar guided flak as well, fire can radar. Um, I think there's probably a couple SA-8 sites there as well. So, uh, I think... I think, uh... I think next couple days we'll end up going after... Clearing up a couple more of the AO sites. Get some cast flights in. I am incredibly happy that that SA-10 site has been eliminated and has taken off offline. Yeah, we're cruising. I think that Patriot site's been taken care of too. Oh, no, we've still got Patriot warning from over there. We're running our IFF scans on these on these radar contacts that we're getting. But I think that's all friendly. Uh, if you were able to pay attention to the, the day one of the Liberation version of Sinai, um, the very first day we ended up shooting down a hundred and like 150 or 140 uh, aircrafts. So to kind of eliminate that, I've kind of scaled back a little bit on the amount of flights. Like even even our AI flights here, I've kind of scaled down a little bit. Um, I didn't want I didn't want a whole lot of aircraft kind of flying around. Like even even these little bar cap flights are a little too much. Because they're not and they're not really doing anything. Like I understand the whole idea of the bar cap flight is to protect the bases, but like what what are these guys doing? I have no idea. Bar cap. Bar cap. Bar cap. Bar cap. <laughs> bar cap. Bar cap. I feel like if anything, we we should probably have bar cap like up here on the front lines. That way it's protecting our ground units. And kind of defending the front lines. If they're up here on the front lines defending, they should essentially put a wall up against our airfields as well and kind of protect them at the same time. So, who knows? I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. I think I might, I think I might scale back on the, the bar cab. Because the idea is they should, check it out here. Yeah, it looks like there's only two launchers left of the SA-10 site, so we we did a really good job on that. It looks like the blue side is or the red side is sending out some cab flights now. Eed sweep.
Wow. Even this guy went on and did his uh did his little cat flight. Or not his cat flight, I'm sorry, uh his seed. Went and dropped off a couple of arms. That makes me so happy. Is our airfield. I'm gonna call him. These guys are literally going to do nothing to prevent the front line from getting hit with, uh, well, I guess if Seed is coming after the airfield, I guess we can kind of protect against that. Right, we're about 30 miles out, so we're going to go ahead and start our descent. Pull back on the throttle a little bit, do probably a five degree descent. Oh yeah, 16 has to back taxi.
Or he's gonna back taxi all the way up. So back taxi on the runway instead of getting off and using the actual taxiway. We've got a couple other Patriots that are firing. Tens are coming out though. Eight tens are coming out to play. Although it's weird because I think I've got the mission time set for like an hour. I think I'll just do an overhead break while we're waiting for while we're waiting for the F-16 here to uh, finish taxiing. We'll just do an overhead break on them.
go ahead and get our gears dropped. Got a little bit of turbulence here in case you're wondering why it's hard to get lined up here. Let's go ahead and begin our turn. kind of up a little bit, but This is going to be a rough landing. Oh, that damn crosswind. <laughs> it was freaking rough. And it was still pretty, pretty clean. But, holy crap. Even on the ground, I'm still being blown away. Bonkers. I can't even taxi in a straight line. I take my foot off the pedal. <laughs>
Keep coming on. We're crossing. Back to our parking spot. It's 15 or uh, 55 there. It's 55. I'm not gonna do what the other Viper is doing though. It takes way too long. Other Viper is taxing back down the runway again. I'll do it to get to my spot up here, because that's it. out a bunch of chaff and flare when we dropped those bombs or went from 60 60 chaff 60 flares to uh, 16 each and I was doing single single release one chaff one flare and I just kept popping it every time or right, until so we got back down low behind the uh, mountains up here. a successful sortie. I was actually really happy with that. Go ahead and get everything fired down here. See that master arm was off the entire time.
Well, we made it back in one piece. Got rid of the first SA-10, S-300 site. That should open up the front lines a little bit more. There's still quite a bit of uh, same sites that we need to look at getting rid of. Uh, but we'll look at getting rid of those in the next couple days. 